Hello, um, and welcome to our very first showcase of the year in the APAC region. I have here our awesome APAC cybersecurity strategist, Mickey, who will be taking us through how Devo saw can help boost your soft performance by streamlining alert triage. But before we get started, just some housekeeping. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them down in the Q&A box. Um, this is a live webinar, so you can drop them down whenever, and we'll, reach, I mean, we'll answer the question at some point in the webinar. Also, we'll send out the recording a few days after this webinar concludes, so don't worry about that. And lastly, we actually have a little offer right now. So if you're interested in trying out the Devo Saw, we actually have a free trial right now. Just click on the um, free trial button, and you can go test it out yourself. So with that, I'm going to now hand it over. Thank you, Richard. Hi, uh, my name is Mickey. I'm the APAC cybersecurity strategist here at Devo. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be walking through how uh, automatic alert triage can really boost uh, your SOC performance and you know, ideally take you from hundreds, if not thousands of alerts down to tens of cases. Now to get started, you know, let's talk about some of the problem areas. You know, alert fatigue does demand immediate attention and you know we work with you know various security operations uh, you know whether that's um you know focused on just threat detection or actually end-to-end -end security operations teams you know varying from very small teams to uh much bigger teams and you know something that we hear quite commonly is you know for organizations who don't think about alert triage and you know automating alert triage is that often 80 90% of their alerts that get generated are not even looked at and their mean time to triage is you know uh, at, at best case hours if not um, you know days and you know this is not just you know for the people that we talk to you know this is an industry-wide problem there is you know crazy amount of uh, poor signal to noise ratio uh, what we've what we've seen now uh, independent uh, studies is that you know 80 to 95 percent of the alerts that are generated in the SOC today are not really uh, incidents and uh, what happens is you've got this you know fire hose of alerts coming in the front door and the backlog of those alerts to you know prioritize and go through them is uh, ever increasing and you know, the solution over time has been uh, try different you know, things like correlation has uh, had an attempt to try and, you know, create, you know, super correlation rules to reduce the alert to noise ratio. But, you know, that's that's caused missed detections and, fa and failures in the, um, the alert triage workflow because uh, you're missing lots of things or uh, you, you've got the wrong criteria in your correlation. And so... One of the big questions is, you know, do you have this challenge and, you know, can SOAR um, help this um, challenge? And, you know, for the last three or four years, um, we've been, you know, on this security automation journey and uh, not many have actually implemented in the same way that uh, Debo SOAR has today. It's very focused on the enrichment side and, you know, maybe, you know, first level response action. But the alert triage and alert fatigue issue is still a problem. So when we think about the step-by-step -step guide to, you know, how we start uh, mastering alert triage, we're going to get into the details about it today. The thing you need to keep in mind is you need a, a systematic approach to uh, doing alert triage. You know, I can't just go through and say, I'm going to automate, automate or alert triage and um, it'll just happen. Um, it starts off uh, with defining success criteria and metrics you know you need to measure uh, where you are today you know how many alerts are you triaging per day um how many how long does it take you to get uh from get around to that incident so you know uh, mean time to you know start the investigation you need to have those metrics in place and so the criteria is clear and you know exactly what uh you know what you're trying to ach achieve you know we, we regularly see that 2,000 alerts in uh, you know at a day is sometimes possible for a a large security operations in a large um, you know large environment. You know some get 2,000 a month, but having that metric 
um, inside and, and written down is is absolutely uh, important. Step two, you know, what you want to do is you want to find the alerts that are you know most noisy and start tackling them. You know, um, if uh, you've got a big team, you know, go out and actually do those metrics. Um, but you know, if you're a if you're a small team, um, you know, what you could do is you know pick a random set of uh, thirty or fifty alerts and you know spend your time investigating. Okay, well, where did we spend that time? And that sort of um, works through to that next step. You've got these, I guess, uh, sample of events. And you work out well what are the investigation steps of those because um, you want to increase the repeatability and so once you get those steps uh, documented uh, it doesn't need to be detail oriented it just needs to be you know repeatable in a conversation workflow whiteboard anything you need to uh, first be able to describe it before you can codify it so uh, many automation um, organizations who go down the automation path uh, think they need to codify it first before you yeah, are writing out the logical workflow uh, but I'm here to say that writing out the uh, logical workflow is the biggest improvement you can make to uh, you know, your implementation of alert triage with automation and then moving on when you as you're going down that playbook creation uh, what you want to do is you want to sort of build in the metrics collecting and reporting so you know how long to take for the alert to be triaged before and after you know after that you implemented that change so that way you've got this constant uh, feedback loop and you know to step back from here step back here is you know to jump back into the playbook you know one of the things that uh, we often find is that there's a lot of tribal knowledge inside uh, organizations inside secure operation centers. And so uh, what we're finding is uh, with that tribal knowledge, some people know how to do uh, triage a particular incident and then some not. Uh, so getting rid of the tribal knowledge or actually harnessing that tribal knowledge, maybe a better way of putting it and putting it into automation ensures that you're uplifting everyone in uh the security or uh, the security um, team, security operations center. And finally, uh, once you go through and you've actually done the playbook creation, you want to actually automate it. You want to do things like remove the false positives, uh, remove those noisy alerts that keep uh, keep repeating and keep coming up. You want to create rich contextual cases, and you know. Uh, in addition to this, add one-click responses, which we'll talk about soon because uh, when we talk about responses, people can get a little bit worried about, you know, what does a response do? Um, but we'll cover that later. So, you know, when we've seen this implemented uh, across our customers, you know, and um, organizations globally, you'll see that there's about 80 to 90% of these alerts that the team um, is able to automate end to end through with uh, through automation, which is, you know, a nice, uh, nice data, a nice way to start your your week in terms of, uh, you know, SOC triage, rather than you having to go through and, you know, triage a 1000 alerts, you're actually thinking about cases. And that's an important aspect to keep in mind, you should be investigate your analyst should be investigating cases, and not alerts alerts are, you know, are quite commonly seen as the noise uh, uh, through the signal. So focus on how can I reduce my alert volume to focus on cases and not, you know, reduce the, um, you know, reduce the total alert count. So with that, you know, SOAR can make it better now. And this is one of the key differentiators um, and key things to consider. Um, SOAR is the answer to alert triage and alert automation. You can implement it today. Um, DevoSaw has out of the box case correlation system to actually immediately solve this particular problem. That's one of the reasons why uh, Devo acquired this technology because uh, we were saw that it was proven in the field to actually effectively reduce the alert volume. So the, the technology we acquired uh, had an MDR service and uh, they had automated first level triage. So we took 
that intellectual property, that uh, uh, propri- that uh, patented information and patented style of alert triage and baked it into the Devo platform so that when an alert fires, it's autonomously triaged. And we'll show you how it looks inside the demo today. So moving on to the problem, you know, a bit more, you know, digging a little bit deeper, you know, a lot of teams spend a lot of time, you know, doing alerts manually. Um, and in our experience, what we've seen is much as 80 to 90% of that work time is being spent, uh, you know, that 80, 90% of that time spent investigation can be uh, automated, which is uh, a far stretch from what's happening uh, today. And so what, how SOAR makes this problem much more palatable and easy to manage is that we can automate the initial review of 100% of alerts using playbooks, 100% of them. We do that by aggregating alerts by similarity, IP addresses, usernames, host names. We assign them a customized priority based on the risk score that's part of it. And then we give a log explanation as to why an alert might be considered a false positive. And this is something that's uh, not often uh, thought about. It's always uh, you know, in the SOC, you're always trying to find um, what, apologies, what is bad. And you're looking for this, you know, trying to find this idea why this indicator might be bad. But often uh, when you, you know, look at the alert investigation, it's actually a more efficient process to actually rule it out. In other words, why is this not worthy of my investigation? And when you take it from that angle, you can actually increase your uh, investigation velocity because you're trying to rule it out, give a reason why this might be normal. Um, you know, uh, as, as a joke we make, um, you know, uh, around the application uh, application allow listing community, that there's many business applications that are in use that you know behave just like malware. And so, uh, when we start to you know uncover these alerts and do investigation, we realize that most of these alerts that are coming in from business applications and users are just users being users, uh, you know, behaving like malware. So, ruling the stuff out early on is is tremendously important. And so with those metrics and, you know, thinking about how we um, implement it in the real world, um, when, again, when we uh, Debo acquired the SOAR, um, one of the first things that we did as a Debo company was implement the SOAR platform in Debo's uh, internal SOC. And the internal SOC that we have, you know, we're not a you know huge, large, you know, you know, hundreds of SOC analysts. We're, we're a small, lean SOC team. And so what we did is we implemented the SOAR and uh, what we were able to do within a, a very short amount of time was actually reduce uh, the alert volume inside a Devo SOC of about 96%. Um, and that was about two to three uh, weeks of work. And so we were able to go from, you know, 1,900 alerts in seven days out of those 1,900, only 704 of those were in cases and only 66 in a case. And so you can quite clearly see that we've filtered out the noise, we've looked at the alert that uh, warranted investigation and then collapsed them by commonality, you know, whether IP, host name, or so on and so forth, and then presented them as cases, 66 cases. Yeah, a lot more manageable than um, you know what it was a couple months ago, and this number I'm a sh- I'm uh, confident would have actually reduced even more. So now we've gone through this. Well, what is the next problem that we can solve? That cases don't have sufficient context, and you know, I want to highlight this because you know you can eliminate again 95% of those alerts, um, and for the things that you, you say are false positive, nobody needs to look at it. Um, people want to know why do you think it's a false positive? So that's where enrichment really comes in. So um, one thing you need to ask the question is, how can I even, you know, how can I you know perform you know an accurate decision making process as an analyst if I can't explain why 
I believe this is an incident or it's not. And so here's where um, contextual case management is really important. And so if you're thinking about the SOAR workflow, what you can do in the SOAR is you want to do things like uh, uh, linking alerts to a case, correlating different cases together, doing visual graphs uh, in a single click so you can display connections between current activity and previous activity. And finally, you want to add playbook automation enrichment to provide features that enable you know, esta that establish context. For example, you want to you know, have risk score for a user. You want to know um, their previous behavior. And this can all be automated. It's simple one-click automation or even autonomous in, um, autonomous uh, automation. And so what we can do is focus on that contextual information, put it in the case so that rather than the analysts, you know, spending 15 minutes or 30 minutes looking into an alert, they can actually reduce that down to a couple of minutes and they can process more. So that 66 case number doesn't seem uh, too bad. So triage can be automated, but you can also automate the response now. And so this is a, a really high level overview about what response might look like inside um, you know, the Devo saw. And also, you know, some case notes here. You can see the who, the where, the key information, the what, the why, and also the why nots. And so for the, one of the things that uh, you'll see on the, on the task is that they're already done. These little mini response tasks that are, you know, part of the standard workflow for an analyst are all there ready to be either queued up and executed or um, automated. This removes some of that real concern that organizations have when it comes to uh, running response action and automated response actions for that matter, because you know people get a little bit worried that you know if I automate all the response actions, then um, what uh, you know will it break something, for example? And so this functionality really allows it allows us to bring that response action to every uh, SOC analyst. And so, you know, this is a live case that I'm showing showing you now that I went through where we went through, um, saw multiple alerts involved for uh, a few users, an admin user and a normal user, multiple IPs and host names, all autonomously correlated uh, together. And this is the contextual information that SOCs need uh, to not burn out. And so moving on, what are the things that we can do um, to automate the response? And I'll just give you a little brief run through about what this activity is doing. So you notice here, this is an example of a, a couple of the simple actions you can do, um, you know, automatically assigning the case, building a timeline of what of the alerts over, you know, a, a storyline looking at a graph, just simple things uh, that your analysts are doing manually that can just be staged automatically. Uh, and, you know, we can move the, remove those, let's say, 20 to 30 actions and put them all in the fingertips of the analysts. And so with that, I'll, I'll, I'm going to present one little graph um, to show you what um, uh, we mean. This is something that we, um, in the Devo's internal SOC, and, you know, what I, what I wanted to wrap it up with this slide is that, you know, um, when we looked at the alerts, we actually noticed, and this is, you know, a really simple way of looking at your alerts over time, is that you'll find that some of your alerts are, are really chatty. Just focus on these. You know, if you were just to focus on the top five use cases or top five alerts that were uh, creating, you know, the noise inside your environment and, and focus on automating that, you could reduce your alert volume uh, you know, tremendously just by focusing on those, those top fives and all those tail ones that you don't need uh, to look at. Um, you can you know, put them for a later phase. So with that, I'm just gonna show you sort of a brief overview about what the Logic Hub case management solution and the Debo case correlation system, sorry, is all about and I'll share my screen and pivot over to 
give you an understanding of what, I, what you can do with our platform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off in the system overview. The system overview is the place in which you start your day as a SOC analyst to see, you know, there's a thing, thing of this is like the, the SISO uh, metric board. You've got the understanding about, you know, how much time has been saved, your return on investment, how many cases have been created, the cases by status, you know, is someone being uh, involved in the playbook? And this is our, you know, the flexible dashboarding system makes it really easy to take those playbook steps and convert them into dashboards, which ultimately improve those metrics um, that you're, you're measuring when you're, when you're thinking about automating alert triage. But as a SOC analyst, I want to jump in and say, well, you know, how well has my you know, case correlation system been running? In this environment here, what you'll notice is I've got, you know, 21,000 alerts. I've got some pretty noisy alerts in this environment. But out of those alerts, I've got 224 of them that have made it to a case and 14 cases in total. So in terms of the reduction, you can already see um, how this is making a tremendous impact on uh, my SOC performance. And looking down here, I can see, well, this honeypot access, you know, I might want to actually, uh, you know, look at this particular one because it's causing me, you know, a, a bit of concern. There's a lot of cases where this one is involved. And I might want to see um, if there are other, other alerts that are, you know, particularly noisy. So this one here, there's a risky account that's firing off. And so one of the benefits of using this method um, and you know, automating alert triage is that you don't need to be super focused on alert tuning. You can let alerts, you know, behave how they want to behave and then focus on tuning what comes to a case. So, you know, you don't want to do a one-to-one -one mapping from alert to case because that's when alerts become noise. You want to say, okay, well, how can I reduce the cases my analysts are investigating? And so here I've got my open cases by priority and minutes open. So um, what I want to do as a SOC analyst, I want to jump into uh, my cases, just have a look and see all the cases. And, you know, if I wanted to, I could probably just start from at a high level, you know, what is um, open, what's been worked on. Uh, maybe I'll say, you know, just show me just the cases. And I don't really care about the low, uh, the low priority. What I do care about is something that's you know of critical priority. And so just going through this triage process, I can go through and say, all right, these are the critical. So again, you know, out of those, you know, sixteen or so cases, uh, if not more, um, I've got four that are of critical, um, critical severity. So again, we're reducing that admin workload. They know this is something that I need to work on immediately. So let me jump into uh, the most recent case. This is a case for 192.168.38.56. Uh, the user here, it's you know Tina Frederick. Um, I can see what IP address have been discovered as part of the alerts, the alerts that were involved. And I can see here, at least one of the risk, uh, alert risk score exceeded the 80 risk threshold. So I can see this uh, particular IP has increased its risk over time um, and I've had um, a particular account, so Tina Frederick, increase her risk over time. So um, the other alerts don't have a risk score associated, but I know that the behavior of this uh, device has inclined me to think that um, I need to actually actively investigate it. And just having the contextual information here, I can see, you know, if I want to actually have a look at um, you know, alerts over time. I can I can do that right here. If there's any cases that have been linked, I've got that right here. And also, the linked alert. So I can say, well, this you know anomalous day of week or anomalous time that they've authenticated. I've got this uh, DLLs that have been loaded for this user. And I can just quickly pivot into this, take an understanding. Okay, well, what what was the field? You know, what was the alert ID? The technique? The tactic? And I can look look into the detail. Uh, if I wanted to, but as an analyst, I've got all the information here. And when I want to go to the one step response, I can just go run quarantine host and I'll go through, get the information from the case and automate that response. And this is the value of 
you know, not thinking of that response is something that uh, needs to be done, needs to be automated end to end. You just need to put the response actions, those one click response actions, uh, at the SOC analyst's fingertips. So they can run them after the humans made the the assessment, not um, you know this complex computer. The human comes in, reads the reads the uh, content of the case, has contextual information, and then can go through and um, you know quarantine that host. And they can also pivot and say, hey, you know. Are there any other similar cases? Now it's note, noted that these IP matches for this case. So maybe I just want to link these two cases together. And now I've got this case linked together um, from the other case. So now um, we're making it very easy to link contextual information for the analyst to you know, pivot between multiple uh, technologies without having to you know, do this process manually if i jump in here i can see some more things uh, that have occurred so um, we'll leave this investigation uh, for another time so with that um, i'm going to pivot back to uh, the last part and so there were some questions uh, i want to leave uh, try and keep this on time and uh, so there was questions that come in um, will it be possible to get the slides uh, yep yeah, we'll, we'll uh, make sure that we uh, reach out to your team um, after this call, and we'll um, we'll send it out. So, next question: you know, Is uh, Devo a SOC as a service? So, no, we do not provide uh, MDR services. What we do provide is the software capabilities to automate first-level triage. Um, SOC as a service. We have some outstanding partners uh, that we uh, refer organisations who need managed SOC service. So, if that's something you're looking for uh, we'd be more than willing to introduce you to some of our key partners in the region uh, depending on which region uh, you come from great um, if there are any other questions um, please feel free to uh, message us or contact us um, via linkedin um, we'll be sending out the recording later so you have my contact details on that and um, I thank everyone for making the time to join today uh, we hope you found this insightful and um, with that I'll pass it over to Richard to close up awesome thanks Mickey for that um, but yeah if you have any other questions um, for him now but otherwise make sure you test out our Devo trial uh, for the saw um, the link should be in the console I think on the right but yeah if that's no more questions, I'll close it off here. And thanks for tuning in and hopefully see you in the next showcase. Thanks.